Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to be doing another in my Human Rainbow series using the Fairy Flutters stamp set from Penny Black. And for the finished cards, I'm going to combine these six adorable little fairies with the thank you sentiment from this Pretty Pink Posh set. I love the script in it. That's going to go really well with the lacy look of the stamping on each of these little fairies. I'm coloring on Nina cardstock, which is my usual cardstock. I am going to be trimming these out, so there's some areas where I'm just going outside the lines and not stressing about it, so please don't worry about it. If you're really going crazy and you know you're going to cut the paper out, then just let yourself go way out of the lines. I'm going to try to be a little bit tidy for your sake, so you don't have to hyperventilate overseeing coloring going outside the lines. I'm going to be using mostly browns in a lot of these because I haven't done that much. I always use my blue violets or my violets in my coloring of skin. But I'm going to try in some of these to not do that and use some brown colors. I will give you the colors for this entire fairy, including that pretty pink for the cheeks and for all the colors of her hair and her, uh, her outfit but I will only be giving you the colors for the skin tones for the rest of these. And I'm speeding it up on the coloring of the outfits and things because this is all about the skin. So I'm going to just slow it down so that you can watch the skin tone colors go by since that's what the human rainbow is all about because we are a human rainbow and these guys are a little fairy rainbow and we want to try to adapt ourselves and and expand our minds a little bit to include lots of different ethnicities when we do our coloring on cards or whatever art that we're creating. This little one, I was thinking about the fact that hands are a lighter color than everything else. And I'm gonna use only two colors to color this little fairy, but I'm going to try to use only one layer of the E13 on the hands, which is gonna make it look like I have a third color. And I'll use multiple layers of some of the colors here in order to darken some and make it look like I have more colors. So experiment. If you find two colors that work really well for you, don't worry about adding a third just because there's some mystical law of the Copic universe that says you have to use three colors. I think they say three because you can get a real range of depth. You can get go from a really dark into a very light color if you have multiple colors to blend with, but there is no science that says you must use three colors all the time. So here on the belly, I'm trying to work my way around the outside to soften that darker shadow color, and then just fill in the area in the middle with few strokes, because the fewer strokes, the fewer layers of a color that you put down, the lighter it will be. And if you just keep adding more color to the rest of it, you're going to soften out those other areas, but I'm going to try to see if I can do this whole little child in just two markers. And depending on, you know, how well your blending is going, you might want to color the rest of the image and then go back to layering over the skin again, if you feel like you need to blend more out. But often I find that by the time I finish coloring the rest of the image, I don't even notice anymore if there were areas that didn't blend perfectly or weren't exactly the kinds of colors that I was looking for. So this little baby looks a bit Hawaiian to me. I don't know about you. Looks like a little Hawaiian baby with a lay on her head. I'm going to color in each one of my flowers and I'm just using the same combination that I used on the last one with the same pinks and the same greens and things. Here's another little baby that I'm using an E11 for the base tone for it. And I'm going to add some darker colors to make her look maybe a little bit Hispanic. And a lot of these, I may call it Hispanic, you may call it my cousin or something, uh, no matter what ethnicity your cousin is. But I recommend getting a picture to follow along with and and see if you can make something look like your recipient. See if you can make it look like it matches them. Especially if it's like on their birthday card and you find a stamp that looks a lot like them. Color the skin tone to look like them. They'll feel very special when you've sent them a card that you've spent some extra time to try to help them to see themselves in the card. 
especially with little kids, they get very excited by that sort of a thing because they know that people don't all look the same. Kids tend to get that a little more naturally than the rest of us. Uh, if you ever do use some human rainbow action in your card making, be sure to tag me over on Instagram. I would love to see what you're doing. And so would everybody else. So check the human rainbow hashtag and see what other people have been creating with different ethnicities on either cards or regular art. doesn't have to be card making, but that's what a lot of my audience is. So that's why you see a whole lot of it. So I'll finish decorating out her little tutu. And I am going to show you a little bit at the end on how to amp up that tutu and make it even more special when we get to the end, because I'm going to do a whole lot of detail work on them after I get all the images finished. So here I'm going to jump in with that BV00. I'm using it on top of an E50, which is a very yellowy color. Did not work out all that well because I just the baby looks sort of sallow. I'm going to add some E53 over top of it, which brings that purple back into being a, a more normal color for skin tone and gives it much more natural look than browns in many occasions. You'll get a little more um, natural skin tone using a purple. But I'm going to try that E50 again to blend it out and it just looked sallow still. So I went back in with an E00, a much more intense color that has a little pink in it. And the baby just came back to normal once I just did a few swipes of that E00 on top. So don't feel like just because you've chosen a color combination that there is no adapting of it. If you take my Copic Jumpstart class, link in the doobly-doo down below, then that will talk a little bit about how to layer colors, how to change the tone of a color by glazing something else over top of it and give you a lot of chance to practice both in regular color combinations and skin tone combinations. Lots of different ideas on how to take the markers you already have and learn how to use them differently and create different colors so you don't have to buy them all. We use the BV00 again with this one, and I've got a much more natural skin tone for a baby to start with. So this is going to be a little easier to do. I won't have to add another color to it because I've got that really nice creamy baby tone underneath. And sometimes, you know, you just grab a marker that doesn't quite look like what you wanted, like that E50 works great for old people, but looks terrible on babies because babies have that really nice warm peachy pinky skin and old people like me, we start looking a little sallow after a time. So uh, just layer something over it to change that tone a little bit. I'm just coloring out all my flowers on each one of these. I love how they designed each one of these stamps and so they each have different positions, different types of flowers, but I'm using all the same colors for all of them. So when I finish, I'll have a really nice set of thank you cards. I make a lot of thank you cards for patrons that support my work and they're wonderful people and I send out cards on a pretty regular basis and I needed some more to add to my stash for that. So that's what these are going to go for and I will have six of them. So when I saw that I had six stamps to color, I thought both the human rainbow would benefit and I could get six more thank you cards to add to my stash since I like to color all of the images. So here's one with a YR01 for the base tone, another really creamy, uh, but more on the yellowy side baby tone. And I wanted to use that yellowishness underneath and to do a darker skin baby, but give it that base coat of a more yellowy color because there's different types of, uh, of dark skin tones. Well, some will be more purple, some will be more red, and this will have a little bit more of a yellow tone to it. So it really depends on where exactly that baby's lineage is from. And I'm sure that there is probably some sort of global chart that you could find out that, you know, people with such and such skin tones tend to come from a certain part of the world or something. But, you know, that's more scientific than I am about this. I just like to experiment with making some light and some darker and some more tanned and some less tanned and that sort of thing. It's playing with a lot of different colors. 
And here it got a little too yellowy, so I just took my E33 and going back in with a real quick flick over a few areas to try to soften some of those out and make them a little less yellow. Give her just a little bit more rich color. And now back to speed coloring all the rest. Sometimes I look at this and I wish I could color that fast. But this is already a long video, that's why you're getting some sped up stuff. Most people will not tolerate watching a really super long video because you're busy and you need to get out there and do some coloring. You need to do some coloring so you can tag me and I can see what you're coloring. That would be most awesome. I love seeing other people take on the challenge of different ethnicities because lots of us tend to just do far too many plain old Caucasian folks in our, our coloring. So for each one of these, I wanted to make it look like these tutus were lacy. So I'm taking a white gel pen and I'm going around that outside edge in, in particular and making sure that that black line is covered and then just using scribbles and dots. And look how it makes it look like it's all like glittery and twinkly. And it's just with a, a white pen. So you can add glitter to it, but you could also just do it with a white pen and get that same effect. And then I took some glossy accents over top each of the wings and added some super fine glitter. And while all that was drying, I got out my Copic airbrush. I'm going to do fast, fast airbrush. So you put the airbrush into this little holder, squeeze the trigger, and it blows out the marker color onto the paper. So I've stamped my babies and my thank you sentiments so I knew where I was going to put the color, how I wanted that color to interact, and I just used two colors on each one of these, a pink and a blue. Gonna just airbrush a little bit across there so I have some nice backgrounds. I now have my fussy cut little finished guys glued on there on top of those stamped images that I had. And then I'm using my colorless blender to add just a few bubbles right around the sentiment and the little fairies. And now I have a full set of six wonderful cards and they look a lot fancier and more involved than they were. But that airbrush background gives them just a really soft atmosphere to float around in along with those little bubbles. And I have all these really cute little babies. They're so adorable. So I hope this is something you might try is doing a little different ethnicities in your coloring. Be sure to tag me if you do. There's more videos here on the screen if you want to see more about that. The Copic Jumpstart class I spoke of is on the screen as well. And you can click on my face to subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye bye.